God, he's left me for dead. <laughs> oh, damn it. You might be wondering why I'm on an e-bike for today's video. Don't worry, we're not EMBN. This is GMBN Tech, and I'm here to do a very special bike check. And it's with Martin Ashton, who's over there, with his bowhead. This thing is loaded with tech. Can't wait to get stuck into this bad boy. Okay, Martin, is, this is, where do we even start? Right, so let's go back to the, the journey first of how you even got involved with Bowhead. Uh, wasn't it 2017 when we were riding at Whistler? Yeah, well, it was when we were in Whistler. I think it might have been 2016, maybe. I don't know, it was a while yeah. back, but I was at like the, the base camp of the uh, kind of event, you know, down in the bottom of town where all the stands were up. And I saw a guy riding through on a very early version of one of these turned out to be Christian Bag, who, who is the designer and founder of the company. And he, he kind of grabbed hold, he was like, man, man, I want to show you my bike. And, um, and yeah, I just got chatting with him and I was just fascinated with it from the word go. But I've got to admit, when I first saw it with Christian on it, I remember thinking, he's a kooky guy, that's a kooky looking bike. And I was a little bit dismissive because it's a weird riding position. Was this because you were on your bucket bike at the time, so yeah, a regular two wheel bike? Yeah, and I think I was trying to pioneer the two, getting back on two wheels. And I saw, I didn't really understand the bike. Yeah. Um, and then we kept hanging out on that trip and we went out a beer and he told me all about it. And then I realized this guy's brilliant. This is, and you'll know from meeting Christian yourself, he's, he's actually brilliant. He, you know, he's got some amazing ideas. He's worked so hard to get this bike to where it is. This is probably iteration number 26, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, it, it's been it's been through so many iterations, but it, it really is an incredible bike. And you can obviously see by looking at it, it's, it's an incredible bike in terms of the technology on it, but it's more incredible for what it does for someone like myself in the independence it gives you as a, as a, a, as a a rider with a disability, but the ability it gives you to go out on the trail with your friends and not rely on them helping you. And that is that is a fabulous feeling. So, in, in case people aren't aware, um, one of the first bikes you rode was the Nikolai bucket bike with no no motor in it. Yeah. And you were riding with Chris Ackrig, uh Blake. Blake and Danny Mack. And Danny yeah. Mack, yeah. yeah. Great crew of friends for Mark yeah. to ride with, but obviously you were completely reliant on them to Help keep you going. And they the literally bike. pushed me off the top of the hill and off I went. Yeah, yeah. Well, and it's an incredible video, it still yeah, is. Um, and then moving on from there, we put, uh, was it the Ego it Motor? Was the Ego Motor on the uh, Canyon Sender, yeah. which is a fabulous bike. And um, I rode uh, down Fort William on that, and that was amazing. Um, and also, obviously, Whistler, yeah. which was amazing. They were just fantastic trips. The bucket bike is incredible fun. Um, there's, there, it's also the most thing. terrifying invention known to mankind. Yeah, yeah. Well. I mean, it's, it's great fun, but it is frightening. It, it can go wrong. Yeah. The, the bowhead's something different. It, it, it's a different riding experience. It, it's slightly strange when you first get on it because it's sort of, you know, you have to come up with a new riding style. But then once that clicks in, man, it is amazing. It's so fun. It, it's just the best. It's like the, it's halfway between a rally car, like the front end's doing rally car stuff. Yeah. The back end's doing mountain bike stuff. You can like Scandi flick into corners. It, it's wild. It's wild, wild fun. But it's also, it's this freedom it gives you to like be able to go onto like a cambered, part of the trail and not tip over like you can see in my wheelchair heel i'm really like in a sketchy place already that if i lean too far that way yeah look the wheels nearly off the ground but on the bucket on the bowhead you just like adjust your position and you're perfectly safe 
with confidence and balance and there's right. an awful lot going on man, that makes it amazing. Uh, it's, it's insane to look at, it really is. Uh, so, so just give us a quick rundown and we'll we'll pick up on a few things. So obviously you've got the two wheels set up at the front with your steering. Um, we'll go into that separately. Yeah. Uh, so you've got a motor on this side at the back. Is that a speed controller battery? Yeah. Rear coil shock on there. Uh, 26 inch wheel, fat bike tire at the rear with a massive carbon fender. And then you've got two rails that run the length of the bike as a sort of a subframe. Yeah. Yeah, well, what's quite cool about it is it's, um, it's actually, if you think about it, it's got a very complicated back at the front end, a very complicated rear end, but there's basically two poles and the, the seat, the front end and the rear end just slide along them poles. So you can make it longer. You can adjust the seat in between the distance between the front end and the rear end. You can play with the wheelbase of it because it is basically all attached with the same attachment really on those two central rails. Um, when I got the bike and it arrived on a plane, Christian had undone it all and just squashed it all up. And there was just two big long poles and the whole bike cramped <laughs> up on one end. Um, yeah, and that, that means that it's um, it's quite easy to adjust. You know, for someone in a wheelchair, you can actually get to everything and adjust the seat myself and the front end and the rear end. Um, but there's once you start looking into like that front end structure and the rear end structure, it is a very complicated mechanism that's making, that's doing some really clever stuff. Okay. That I don't necessarily really understand myself. Well, I'm going to get you to sort of explain this when we get you on this in a yeah. while, so we can actually see how the whole bike moves and it makes a bit more sense then. Yeah. Um, but as far as the actual bike and model goes, it's, it's a bowhead. Is this one a commercially available one or is this like a custom, like? There's a few little custom bits about my one that are just like stuff Christian did for fun. So he kind of like torched the the tube in to give it this kind of like really cool burnish effect yeah. which is really nice um it's got a slight orange tinge to it um i put the hope stuff on just because i'm a bit of a hope geek at times um it's got the can't quit hand guards on and all stuff like that but other than that it is the it's the bowhead reach is the model yep. um and there is a there's a new model coming out later this year which i'm really excited to show you which is a hand bike version that's going to be I can't wait to, I'm hoping I can get a go on one of those. Um, and that's called the Bowhead RX. And that's a very different, that's a brand new sort of iteration of this bike. It's another level beyond. Each bike, they are they are moving it on all the time and looking for somewhere to improve at all, like literally of every build. Um, so you could order the bike and then in, in three months time, it could have got better in the time that you, you know, you, you could get a better one than you ordered. Yeah. Because it, it's improving all the time. So you say that, um, where is your base? Canada? It's in Canada, yeah. So when you say it's shipped over, was that including things like the battery? Because there's obviously limitations on what can be done with. Um, the battery came over from China and I put it into the, the box that came with the bike myself. Okay. It was actually pretty simple. Um, but uh, yeah, that you couldn't just put that battery on a plane <laughs> on a normal. <laughs> yeah, I think it'd probably go bang. But <laughs> but yeah, it's a pretty big. The battery's a pretty heavy bit of kit actually. It just so what's the, down the, the battery side. size and capacity and uh, the motor output yeah, and power? The, the battery's this big, <laughs> <laughs> and the motor is a six thousand watt motor. Six thousand watt. Yeah, it's seriously powerful <laughs> okay so that would explain uh, your antics coming yeah. up here yeah it's really quick but i i don't know too much about the technicals of the battery christian can tell you about i'll it. be chatting to but, christian but yeah but the motor is 6000 watt motor and i know that christian's told me he could get an awful lot more out of it than i'm actually getting but to be honest i just don't need Definitely i haven't needed any any, i've never had a point where i thought more power please it, it's got tons it's got tons and it, it can just get you to some really cool places. I'm, I'm getting a little bit lost looking at it. I feel like we need to get you on it so yeah. we can kind of talk through your body position on here and how it works because you're obviously quite central. Yeah. The wheel sits directly in line with, with your spine really so I guess you kind of know where your wheel is at all times. Yeah, what, what actually happens is once you get on the bike you'll see when I get on it I strap myself in and that actually attaches me at, at my core to the frame. And then, so wherever my core goes is essentially the line of my spine is the line of the rear wheel. Okay. So if I go into a corner and lean in, so will the rear wheel. But the front end 
we'll we'll keep that balance because I'll push the front end out. Yeah. So you 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 sort of become part of the frame. Do you think that gives you like a like almost not feeling, but like a you know where your grip's going to be and what the yeah, wheel's doing? Yeah, it's just really intuitive. It just suddenly feels like you're you know you're really like dialed into it. Um, it, it makes total sense. It makes much more sense once you're moving a little yeah. bit. Um, it, it, it's a it, you're gonna have to have a go, man, and just try and see. If you can get me on this later, I'm I not would sure love we're it. gonna get your legs in there. That's what I'm worried about. You've got we such can, long legs. We can figure something out, hopefully, just to have a go in it. I don't know if anyone needs legs that long. <laughs> well, let's get you in it, and then, because um, I want you to explain to me exactly how this front end works, because this thing is crazy when you see him on it. Okay, so it, what, it makes way more sense seeing you on the bike, actually, and it weirdly looks shorter. Um, I thought your body weight would be more biased towards the front, but it's really quite central. Yeah. So on the back end, it uh, looks just like a single pivot with, I guess, mounts for bike packing gear, sort of stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, and trailer, toes and trailer as well. Yeah, and then these are fully waterproof pelly cases holding all the hardware, which is cool. Yeah, they uh, are the cool. coil shock. Um, but the front is, I mean, there's so much going on. You've got a Fox shock on both sides there, and it looks like it's, I mean, you've got a splitter for the front brake to run the two different calipers off the single lever. Yeah. I mean, that itself is really trick. Yeah, it's cool. So explain to me what happens when you take that pin out, because the entire front end moves, which I guess gets around the stability issues that you would have if it was just a three-wheeler. Yeah, so what it means, I mean, if it was just a three-wheeler, obviously, once you get on a camber, you're instantly uh, in a position where you can only go so far before it topples, yeah. or you have to steer down with the camber you're on, yep. which obviously on a trail, that could be really troublesome. Um, but with that pin out, as you can see, I can lean it over, I can commit my central body weight into that corner um, either way, and then, but because the front end goes outwards with my handlebars, I can pull myself back up. So I've essentially become sort of like, I've got my core stability back through the front end's handlebars. So that's pulling me back up each time. So it, it, it means that I can get on a camber and I can essentially position myself uh, in a balanced point where I, I'm so comfortable I can just be sat there with the brake on and be chatting away and ride away from that point balanced again. Um, and it just means every bit of trail is suddenly accessible to me, which it sounds so simple, but it really isn't. And it's, it's solving so many problems. Um, but it just means you get to have a fantastic day out on it. It's, it's really cool. So, so I, I imagine then with, this is fairly life changing because you could get on this and pretty much ride from your front door without having to have a Blake or me or whoever to, to help yeah. pop you up in places or help turn you around and stuff. Yeah, I mean, I'm really lucky. I've got great friends like yourself and Blake and that whole team at GMBN and EMBN and tech that we're just like, a great big family so i've got people to ride with but we all know there's nothing better than going out for a ride whenever you want you yeah. know so i can literally go in my garage ride this out and i can go for a two-hour ride out in the mountains near my house and i don't need to have anyone help me i can just be on my own i've got complete i've even got my sandwiches and it, it, <laughs> it's just freedom it really is freedom and it's it's not only freedom like a lot of the time with an ability product you're getting some kind of freedom. Whereas on this, you're getting a freedom and a riding experience that will be fun for you, let alone me. You know, it's just really good it's fun. It's all good. And it, but it gets you places you just never would have thought you'd be able to get once you're in a wheelchair. Yeah. And I love that about it. Um, okay, so I've, I've got two other questions with this. So, um, do you know what the battery battery life is like? It's obviously a, a, a huge battery in there. Yeah. But does that give you limitations with the riding? Um, well, I mean, you can only go, it, the battery does run out. I've only run it out once. Um, and that was riding at Bike Park Wales and we were towing Blake up and down the hill with like using all the power and going as fast as we could. Um, like we've ridden up here today and I've not used any battery yet. Yeah. So I mean, it's it's got a, a considerable distance on it, especially when you're going at other people's pedaling speed. Yeah. If you're flat out, 30 miles an hour anywhere, it's gonna run you down. But it does last a long time, but I've not, I've not worked out the actual distance yet. Cause you, it's very hard to tell because you've just got to, depends what you're doing with it. Yeah. But um, 
yeah, I mean, you're talking about a good two hours worth of riding if you're not going crazy. At well, least. That's, that's brilliant. Um, okay, and well, the, the other question is about you and your position on the bike. So, uh, with your adapted bikes previously, with the bucket bikes, I know yeah. there, was, there was always a limited amount of time you could stay in that position because of pressure, and it, yeah. it, it was, well, it was adapted, the, the whole oh. thing, but this is like a bespoke things designed yeah. for you to sit in well one of the i mean this is because it's been designed by someone who's in a wheelchair himself um that problem never really came up for christian because i was making a bucket bike and the bucket i was sat in is not something to designed to be sat in a long time we were using minimal amount of cushion yeah. because we're trying to clamp me into the bike whereas i'm essentially sat on exactly the same cushion uh, which is a pre pressure relieving cushion you know a really expensive bits of kit, yeah. um, lots of technology in them themselves. And I can sit on this bike all day long, all day long. It's the same cushion that's on my wheelchair and um, I'm as comfortable here as I can be sat anywhere else, in my wheelchair, on my sofa, on the cushion in the, the dirt show, Joe, whatever. So that basically has answered my question. Yeah. This, this really is a key to freedom then in, in all respects. So it doesn't sound like the battery holds you back. It's certainly got power to get you anywhere you dare go for I can work out. It handles as you need it to and it's comfortable. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's a bit of a revelation, I think. Yeah, I think one of it's only, if I said if there was a bit of a drawback, it's almost too capable because it starts you thinking, I wonder if I could do that. And that's when I've got in trouble is I've gone, I wonder if it could do that. And obviously it has got free wheels. So there are, it can topple over. And when it does, <laughs> It's not the best situation. Um, to, let's be honest about this. That sounds like a Martin Ashton problem, not necessarily no. a bowhead problem. <laughs> no, no, you can't help but think, oh, I think I could do that. And then you, you do it and then you topple over and you're like, no, nah, that was never going to work. But it, it really is, yeah, so capable that it, it leads you on. Okay, so let's have a look at the suspension and the brakes and all this sort of cool stuff up at the front end then. So. You've got independent suspension, essentially, yeah. on this with the way it works. Yeah. Um, I guess you, you, you don't need a lot of suspension on it. It, it looks like quite a lot on the rear with that shock. What did you say, uh, around five inch travel? I mean, it's about like five inch travel, yeah. and I think it's about three on the front. Um, and what's interesting about the, the suspension on the front is that the, the shocks are behind the front axle, so yeah. there's no dip when you brake. Um, yeah. it, the shock is just because Christian no breaking dive, no breaking dive at all. Because Christian doesn't want like your feet going yeah. closer to the floor when you brake. Um, so so kind of uh, like a mini trust linkage fork then. A little bit, <laughs> a little bit, yeah. Um, but it's really, I, I've got to be honest, I haven't set the shocks up that much yet. Yeah, I've twiddled all of them a little bit, but I get I get so excited about riding it. I don't fiddle <laughs> with it as much as I should. But yeah, hey, I think nice. everyone everyone's guilty of that. Mm. Just want to go out and ride. Yeah, you know, worry about the other stuff later. Um, what else is there cool to say about the front the front end? I mean, the, the the movement of the front end is such a clever piece of design, and it came about because Christian was trying to design a ski like a ski across device. Yeah, because he lives in British Columbia, so there's lots of snow. Um, so he kind of came up with this thing that he could balance, but it was going. He was sat here facing that way yeah um so this was this front end movement was gotcha. for his backside yeah and then he realized actually if i turn it round, the way around then my my spine's got the lean and the balance is the front wheels what i want you to do now is show us show us this in action a few times mm. and, and show us some of the, the cool things that it enables you to do yeah well this is a perfect little area for that actually because as you could see when i was sat in my wheelchair just there that was basically where I could get to. Yeah. But like, I reckon I could kind of crawl around here a little bit. Yeah, let's see it. Let's, let's, let's see. see what it can do. Let's see. Let's get my helmet. It's got. Let's get my yeah, helmet because I can fall over easily. So this is actually a really good spot because you can see how challenging the terrain is. And I just wouldn't be able to cross this on any kind of adaptive device, but instantly I've got the power and all of that ability to handle these angles. You see rocks in my way and like this bit here would be impossible, but 
no problem on the bowhead. Big rocks in the way. I can just crab my way around, explore. There's just nothing that's going to really be a big issue for me, which is amazing. Now this is interesting, right? Because this is a good example of why this bike is so amazing. So I'm clearly stuck, okay? Now this would normally be disaster. One, I would have fallen over, and two, I wouldn't have known what to do. But on the bowhead, um, I've got all the control in the brake. I can just edge back, have another look at it, make a different plan. But because I've got the camber, I could... <laughs> it's incredible! And then once you're up, you get to go down, which is pretty cool. Time. Get Seriously, in it. I cannot believe, honestly, what you can get away with on that. Seeing the way that you're like you're transferring left to right through the turns. Yeah. Unbelievable. It's so fun, man. It feels amazing. It feels amazing to ride. It really does. I, I, I'm absolutely astounded at what is possible yeah. on that bike. It's a bit of kick, and man. the turning around, the getting over rocks, the torque, literally everything. Unbelievable, man. It's so good. It's so fun. I think we should get you on it. Maybe that's what we should see next. Ah, maybe the swap we bikes. Actually, no, I'd be a disaster on that. Oh, I've seen you ride these sort of bikes before. That's not your strong point, is it? No. But, uh, no. but this has been awesome. Check out Martin's Bowhead bike. I'm sure a bunch of you are going to have a load of questions to go along with this. I still have. There's loads of unanswered things. Uh, but do get involved in the comments underneath. And actually, if you want to see me and Martin do some more stuff, give us some ideas. Throw them in those comments underneath. We'll see you in the next video. See you later. See you later.